what are you most looking forward to for this season? I'm looking forward to the intrigue with the psychiatric institution and what happens next. Just waiting to see who's going to be here actually. That's the most exciting bit. I just want Elizabeth to become scheming again. I just loved early stages when she was scheming against everyone. That was that was my favourite part of it. I'd been told about it and never really watched it. And then I was, we were on TV on Foxtel and they had the whole series and we sat there and watched it all in about two weeks. <laughs> We were watching three or four episodes a night, we couldn't get enough of it. I just love historical dramas really, they're just sort of a bit of escapism, it's really, yeah, I love it. We love a place to call home, we actually freeze frame to have a look at the fashion. I'm a little bit ahead with the era but I just had a bit of a wardrobe um, dilemma and I thought, no, actually I'll just go poochie. Just the storyline, you know, it, it's something new every, every episode and Noni, she's so beautiful. I want to congratulate Foxtel on picking up a place to call home when they did and we want another what are we up to series five another 10 or 20. and there's a line around the block it's pretty yeah amazing let's just be clear it's not like a uh, justin bieber concert it's a bit different a bit different no we're, screaming more refined, we're a more refined crowd more you know refined palette some great storylines uh, particularly with uh, noni's character um, and I'm excited to see where uh, Lucky ends up this season. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. He, that, he puts a lot of work into what he does, um, that dog. Their dedication and their passion and their support has been so overwhelming and I really hope that they walk away feeling satisfied and excited for four years into the future of 1958. Yeah, hopefully they walk away eager to see more. You know Bevan Lee, he doesn't like to keep anyone happy for long. There's lots of twists and turns to come, but um, I'm looking forward to seeing it on the big screen because I've never been able to make it to one of these, so I'm, I'm really excited. Do you love working on A Place to Call Home? Yes. Wow, look at that. A Place to Call Home for me has always been starting the season on a bit of a high and ending on a real low. <laughs> This one is slightly different in that regard. We kind of start, well I'm not allowed to say where we start, but it's just super, super intense and super dark where we start. There's another twist coming in Ep 2, so really it's a setup for what's going to be a bit <gasps> oh, at the end of Ep 2. The invitation said, bring your blue suede shoes. I didn't have any blue suede shoes, so I went for the suit instead. Oh, Lucky. Lucky's the dog. He's trying to steal your limelight. He wants your interview. Not the first time. Not the first time. Oh, I hope that they just can't see where the rest of the, the series is going. Because I know I couldn't when I read it. Ep 1, I was like, five years on, where are we? What are these people doing? Who are these people? It was I was so thrown. I think that's a great way to start a series. I never do what they expect. The biggest disappointment to me would be if a fan said to me, oh gosh, I knew what was going to happen in the season and it happened and I enjoyed it. For me, expect the unexpected is the way I always like to work. I guess I want them to see that it's never too late. If I explained what I meant by that now, they'd sort of know where the story's going. So I'll just say it's never too late. I also wanted to really make the audience cry. Part way through the season, Australia's going to be awash in a tsunami of tears. And I also want to wrap a certain number of things up in ways that none of them will ever guess they're going to be wrapped up. All I'll say is, if you think you know at the end of episode one what is going to happen in season five, then you're deluded because you don't.